unfortunately. Let's look ahead to a, a race that will be a race and hotly contested as well, the Kipco 1000 Guineas. We'll start with Discourse, one of two for Godolphin. Uh, behind her that day she had Lily's Angel. This is way back in August when she won the Sweet Solera. It was a much improved performance. It was her second ever run and she took a huge step forward. It was really quite impressive. A good turn of foot she's got. At this stage of the, the year she looked the best filly, a uh, two-year-old filly around. Lovely action she's got as well. Really fluent mover. You see you know, she sort of points her toes when Frank, I think Frankie rode this day, lets her down. Um, and she was really promising. She would have run, the attention was to run her, I think, in the sort of finish mile and race like that later in the year, but she had a little setback and missed the end of the season, which is a real shame. If she's fit and well, if she comes back, you know, if she's in this sort of form, she's a threat to everything um, come the day. OK, so that is uh, Discourse, then, who won the, won the Sweet Solera. We can take a look at her stable companion, Lyric of Light, who won the Phillies Mile. Behind her, she had Samatar in second and Ferdors in third. I think Ferdors has been taken out, hasn't she? I'm pretty sure she I think has. so, yeah. Yes, and this, I mean, she, she's done it well this day. She, was, she won the May Hill just before this, very narrowly, and the collections, I think it was fairly obvious that they, she's hit the front some way out and idled, so they tried to hold on to her a, a bit longer. Things didn't go entirely to plan the dip. You see she just sort of becomes unbalanced momentarily, and it's allowed the runner-up on the rails, at Scimitar, to just nick a couple of lengths at a vital stage, and Scimitar knows that, but in good form. In the end, I think she's won, and she's, she's, she's won OK. I think she's won with a little bit in hand. But, um, you know, she's a good finish. She doesn't win by far, but she, despite edging to her right and looking slightly awkward, she does. A, she has got a pretty good attitude, she'd say. She's won two big races narrowly. Um, she's a player. I mean, she, you know, we, know, we know she's a good filly. I slightly prefer discourse of the two um, um, Marmadale Zaruni horses, personally, but I can see the argument for Lyrica Light. I remember that Frankie Dettori said after winning that race that she found the combination of, of the dip and fast ground a little bit much, and he was having to nurse her down it whilst keep her in contention in order to be able to win the race, which she just about managed to pull off. Actually, the pictures really back up those words, don't they? You can see you almost can't let her go, and at that stage, the run-up on the rails is just getting a bit of an advantage. I think she picked, picked her rival off quite nicely. I don't think she's ever a filly who's going to win by a very long way. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's that's a point as well, actually, that she's not that kind of horse, and she is always going to just do enough. Definitely. When she won the May Hill, she cruised into the lead about a furlong out, went about a length and a half clear, and just held on from a horse who met her again that day, and she beat further, being held up, fallen, fallen gold, or fallen, the horse of John Dunlop, today, or, um, anyway, whatever. John Gosson, fallen I beg for you, you, was it? Fallen no. in love, fallen for oh, you, one of the two. Completely, completely one of, anyway, Anyway, apologies, but I think holding, I think they've just worked out they need to hold, hold on to the horse, is just things almost got out of hand on the dip that day. OK, let's take a look at the pre-imprudence, and this was won by Mashura, uh, pre-imprudence of course over seven furlongs. Uh, she did get caught close home in the final furlong of her final start as a three-year-old over, over as a two-year-old over a mile. My concern about her is whether the mile at Newmarket might find her out. Yeah, I think it's a worry. She's a turn of foot horse. She won comfortably this day. You'll see. This is over seven furlongs, and she was always going well. She settled it quickly, and he's won very cosily. The jockey has sort of been very easy on her. And she's won nicely. She's looking round there and already taking a pull now. It's impressive. Form as it stands, an awful lot of horses close up, and I don't think it was necessarily a massive Im improvement on what she did as two. Uh, probably a bit of an improvement, but she has got to prove she gets a mile, and it'll be a different sort of race. I think she's she's one of those horses that I think the French racing really suits. She's got a sharp turn of foot. You know, I think that's very important in French. Well, they've ridden for turn of foot in steadily run races a lot of the time. She's got that. I think it'll be a slightly different for her at. Um, at Newmarket, which is a good filly. Mm, OK, let's take a look at uh, Grey Pearl, who is uh, another contender. We can show you her third at Newmarket, uh, again from last season. She, If she does line up in the 1,000 guineas, we'll be making a debut. Uh, yes. Again, but the question really whether she's quite good enough. This is the, is it the Rockfell? I think it is the Rock, isn't it? When wading yes, is, it is, yeah. yeah. Wading's a very good filly, and that's been just a bit too slow to hand, and maybe it's going to want further. She ran really well without looking necessarily top, top class, I thought. I think she looked a very, you know, she's a promising filly. I do think wading is very useful, but I think on this evidence, she's going to be just short of, um, you know, winning her 1,000 guineas. Okay. 
Let's take a look at the Nell Gwyn. Um, so this is this season's form. It was won by a centipede who isn't in the 1,000 guineas, but in behind her there are plenty that still are. Nayara in second, Lily's Angel in third, Starscope, who ran quite well in fourth, Lady Gorgeous fifth, Sunday Times in sixth. Yeah, it was competitive, but again, I don't think it was a vintage renewal. I do think there was an advantage of being somewhere up the pace, and for that reason, I think Starscope has done quite well to finish where she did. She ends up fourth, and she's done by far the best of the horses held up. The winner was never that far away, and I think it was a tactical affair. It, I, I, yeah, it's not original. Loads of other people felt the same thing. I just did not think uh, this was a, a top class with the Nelgwyn. There were so many horses with a charm. Look at that picture. They look more like a, a handicap. She's won well, the winner, but it's hard to think that any of these are exceptional. I do think Stars going to be better than she looks because she's come from so far back. Yes, she was wearing the first time hood. Um, she was uh, disadvantaged by where, where she ended up uh, racing and has stayed on strong. But you think she's going to like the extra furlong. I've got a sneaking feeling, not for the guineas, but that Nayara will probably have a, a good season at her level because I think she's the kind of horse that will pull out just a little bit all the time. And I think even she might be able to deal with a little bit of a step up in trip. Fair enough. I mean, I think there, there would be good horses in that race. I mm. think there will be. It, 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 it was a, a tactical affair and how reliable a literal guide it's going to be. I, I, I've definitely got doubts. OK. Let's take a look at some Group 1 form. This is from last season. It's the Cheveley Park over six furlongs. It was won by Lightning Pearl uh, quite impressively, quite comfortably, really, although she runs around a little bit in front. That's because she's been out by herself in front for quite a long way. And in second, she has Sunday Times, and in seventh, Lady Gorgeous again. Well, we've just seen both those horses who run in the Nell Gwyn. Sunday Times was another horse who wasn't well positioned in the Nell Gwyn, did quite well to finish where she did, and Lady Gorgeous wasn't beaten far. And Lightning Pearls beat them really well this day. This proves that she's a Group 1 filly. She won nicely. She's got some ground to make up on maybe on a meeting er earlier than this uh, in Ireland, but she's a good filly. She was definitely idling in front. She definitely handles the track. Uh, it's been the target all winter. I mean, she has, you know, she, she's, a, she's a serious player. She is, and I think there's the reason to think on both sides of her pedigree that a step up to a mile will probably suit her. I think it will. I think she was idling that day as opposed to weakening. So, yeah, the Chiefly Park has been a, a good guide, you know, Nassagora not too long ago for this race in the past. OK. Next up, we're going to talk about Diala, who uh, won at Newmarket at the back end of last season in October. Now, we've heard quite extensively both from Maureen and William Haggis about how this horse has been coming along this season and, and the thinking of that is possibly not quickly enough. That's what it sounded like and for, didn't she miss her race at the end of last season? She was really impressive to say. Visually one of the more impressive winners of a new market made I think. I mean she was outclassed her rivals and she really did look promising. She was going to run a couple of weeks later and probably you know they, they decided not to and yes from listening to the interviews it appears she's been a little slow to come to hand. Once race is going to be all you know lightly race is going to be difficult for a uh, uh, experience wise to win a guineas but I think she is a filly of a lot of potential there are other good races later in the year uh, which I think she'll probably feature in yes um William was saying that she hasn't grown a great deal and there was uh, one point where he was worrying that because um, her dam was a, a bit like that she didn't really seem to train on that much and she, he, at the moment there was a point where he was worried that that would be the case with her. She's beginning to show a little but whether she'll be getting to the church on time given the, I mean that's the thing about these guineas, they do come very early in the season and that, as I mentioned before it can so often be about timing. Yeah, it can, you can't afford much of a setback can you? If you get a bad winter, it wasn't a bad winter this year but that can hold fillies up. So yeah I think if you are interested you should really certainly wait till she turns up on the day before uh, getting involved. OK. And finally, we're going to take a look at the Fugue, who uh, won the other division of the Maiden that was won by her stable companion, Starscope. But she put up the better time. She's bred to, to get further, um, and she pretty much whizzed down the dip. And I, you and I were working this day, weren't we? And we really liked the performance. Well, both batches are for the Oaks, which... Uh... Yeah, that was my idea. I think she's fought, I'm just trying to read between the lines. I think she's forced her way into the Guineas because certainly reading things at the beginning of the year, I think Pretty Polly and Oaks appeared to be the way they were going. And I think by, I am assuming it her work, she had a race course gallop with a couple of stable companions recently. She now appears to be likely to run the Guineas. I, su I, I suspect that means she's been working pretty well. Um, it's impossible to talk about the race without talking about Baby. I know it's not, uh, she hasn't been winning on our, on our channel, but she is a rock solid favourite. In terms of what she's done compared to the 2000 guineas, she's a five times winner, she's a group one winner already. 
She hasn't tried a mile yet, but she ought to love it on Breezy. And certainly over seven, she looks like she'll suit it. She really, I think she is genuinely should be a seven to four favourite. I think she's got less doubt about her. She's got experience. She's had five runs, so loads of things in her favour. I think she is going to be very hard to beat. Yeah, she's progressed with every start and right up to the highest level. And you, you have to feel that she's, she's got more to give this season. A lovely pedigree, going to get the mile. Lots to like about her. She's hard to knock as a seven to four. Favorite. I think so. I mean, of the two that we've just seen, she, she, it's easier to make a. You know, it might be the Camelot is different class in the Guinness, but. You can make a real form case for maybe, can't you? The other one is more um, what you imagine he might do. It maybe sets the standard already, and there's no reason to think she won't be a better three-year-old than two-year-old. She's a really good type of horse, and she's, uh, I'd say, the mile, should, the mile should be absolutely no bother. Same three questions. One, have you had a bet in the 1,000 guineas? No. Uh, who would you be, be your selection now? Selection is the likeliest winner, and who would be your bet at those prices? To be honest, it probably would be the same. It's not, I don't back at 7 to 4, but I think 7 to 4 is fair value. I think maybe is my selection. I think maybe we'll win. Okay. I have had a bet in the in the 1,000 guineas. I've backed a Lightning Pearl. Um, I definitely put, would put her up at those prices. I think she's overpriced, and uh, she'd probably be my selection as well. I think she can find quite a bit of improvement over the extra two furlongs. If I'm honest, even, it's, even though it is a selection as well, I know that maybe sets a very good standard and might just be her better, but just the disparity in the in the two prices, it, it would. Be, I'd rather go for that as my selection as well. I don't know whether that quite makes sense. But that, 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 falls for an outsider, and again, only because of back to the oats, and you know, I know you like her as well. I, I think the few might run pretty yeah. well. I, I just have a, I just have a feeling she's forced her way in by the way she's working. Okay. Again, you can see that race live on Racing UK on Sunday week. It's the Kipco 1000 Guinness.